Hello everyone. In this lesson, we will continue to learn about Sublime Text. In particular, we will learn about a package named Emmet, which will give us superpowers when we are writing HTML and CSS. Now, in our previous lesson, we learned about the snippets that ship with Sublime Text out of the box, and they are fantastic. They will really boost our productivity. So we love snippets, and we can think of this Emmet package as a snippet engine or a snippet system that went to Hogwarts. I hope you're ready to become an HTML and CSS wizard. Let's get started. All right, let's begin by installing the Emmet package. So we learned in an earlier lesson that to install a package, we use the command palette. So command shift P. If you are on a PC, that's control shift P. Begin typing install package. Here's the option, hit enter. All right, and now we are going to search for Emmet. So that's E and then two M's. Here it is, hit enter. Be patient, wait a few seconds. And we've got it, we've got the golden ticket. We have Emmet. So we can go ahead and close this readme file because you're watching a video lesson on how to use Emmet. Let's play it safe and close Sublime Text and relaunch the application. Now we can get down to business. So let's imagine that we're writing HTML and we want to create an unordered list with a few list items inside it. So without Emmet, we might use Sublime Text snippets, type UL, hit tab, type LI, hit tab, hit LI, tab. But we can be even more efficient with Emmet. So watch this. Type UL, the greater than symbol, LI, and then hit tab and we can take it a step further. So let's imagine that we wanted to include a link or an anchor inside the list item. Emmet lets us nest as many layers deep as we need to go. So to do that with Emmet, we would type UL, greater than symbol, list item, greater than symbol, A for anchor. Hit tab. It places our cursor in the href value, so I will include a pound. Hit tab again. We can begin typing the name of the link, about us. Now you might be thinking, that's nice, but most lists usually have more than one list item. Well, watch this. Let's say we want 10 list items. UL, LI, times or asterisk, 10, A. Hit tab. And the cherry on top is that I can simply tab through all of the places that I need to type. So the URL will just be a pound, home, hit tab, about us, tab, contact us, tab, frequently asked questions, you get the idea. Let's give ourselves a new goal. Let's imagine that we wanted to create a similar list, but we wanted each LI item to have a unique class. To do that, UL, list item, period for class. Let's give them a class of item, hyphen, and then a number. We can use the dollar symbol to include a number. We still want 10 of them and then include a link in each list item. Tab, we see unique sequentially named classes, and if we wanted a leading zero, we can simply include an additional dollar symbol, or if we wanted two leading zeros, we could include another dollar sign. You get the idea. Hit tab, there are the leading zeros. Let's move on to a new example. So let's pretend we have an existing list of items, and we need to move them from plain text to HTML. So we would need to wrap each line in a list item element. Now we learned in an earlier lesson that Sublime Text has its own native wrapping functions, but wouldn't it be nice if we could use Emmet tab completions when we are wrapping? So let's take a look at Emmet wrapping. I will highlight this selection of text. To bring up Emmet wrapping, it's Control W on Mac, on PC, it's Shift Control G. Now we can see that because I highlighted this whole block of text, it's trying to wrap the entire thing instead of each individual line, and this is not what we want. So let's hit escape. So instead what we're gonna do is we're gonna use Sublime Text's column selection tool. So on Mac, hold down Alt and drag down the left column and then move your mouse to the far right. On PC, instead of holding down Alt while you drag, you would hold down Shift and right click to drag. 
Now that we've selected each individual line, we can use Emmett's wrapping functionality. So again, on Mac, that's Control W. For PC, Shift Control G. So it opens this prompt at the bottom of the screen. I will type LI. Let's give each one a unique class, period, day, dollar symbol. I want one leading zero, so two dollar symbols. And I know it's not very semantic, but you know there are times when you also need a span inside each list item, so you have maybe an extra CSS hook. Looks good to me, hit enter. There we go. And I just realized that all of these list items should sit inside a parent unordered list element. So this is a good chance to show off one of the differences of Emmet wrap from native sublime text wrap. So we actually don't need to highlight this block. We can place our cursor anywhere at the end of one of these list item lines, call the Emmet wrap function. It knows which lines I want to wrap. And I will say ul.daylist. Great. Now let's give ourselves one final HTML goal with Emmet before we move on to see what Emmet can do with CSS. So in terms of HTML, let's imagine that in our mind, we are imagining this code. So let's imagine that in our head, we want to write this code very quickly. It's got a header with an H1, a navigation. There's a div with the main body content. This would be the main column. This would be the sidebar. And then it has a footer. We can actually create this entire output with a single line of Emmet. So you don't need to think that Emmet is only for one parent block of code and then we nest things inside it. We can actually use the plus symbol to create a full structure just like we see here. So let's see what we can do with Emmet to recreate that code. So we begin with a header and we want it to have a class of site header. Within that, we want to include a heading level one and a navigation element. So we can use the plus symbol. We don't want to nest the navigation inside the H1. We want it to be its sibling. So we use the plus symbol. Inside that, there should be an unordered list. There should be a list item. We want five list items. And inside that, there should be a link. So this code takes care of the header. Now we want to add that main meat and potato body area. So we're going to wrap what we have so far in parentheses. If you think back to your middle school math days and your teacher taught you about the order of operations, you can use the parentheses to sort of control the flow. So this is the header. We've got it in parentheses plus new set of parentheses just to stay organized. Div with a class of site body. Inside this, we want a main column, so div main. Plus, we want a sidebar, a side with a class of sidebar. Then we want the footer, so plus a new set of parentheses. Footer with a class of site footer. And inside that, we wanted to include a paragraph. So we're all done. I'm going to move my cursor to the end of the line and hit tab. And we just created an entire skeleton page with one line of code. Thank you for attending HTML Wizard School. All credit to Emmett. Uh, but again, the cherry on top is that we can simply begin typing our brand and just hit tab. And we can work our way through all of this code. Tab, tab, down to the main column area. Hello world. Now we're in the sidebar. Oh, hi. And now we're in the footer paragraph. Copyright. So you get the idea. Emmet can save us a lot of time when we are writing HTML. Now let's change gears. Let's see what Emmet can do for us when we are writing CSS. So let me hop over to an empty CSS file. So let's write a selector. Let's imagine that we're styling the links in our header navigation. We will likely want the links to be block level elements. So display block. Well, that's not very efficient. So we could rely on autocomplete hints. So I start to type display. I could hit enter. It would fill it in for me and then block. Ooh, I would say yes, fill that in for me. But that's not efficient either. So let's do this the Emmet way. DB for display block, hit tab. Let's imagine we want to remove the underline from links. So that is text decoration colon none, TDN. Let's say we want to add margin right 10 pixels, MR 10. I want 15 pixels for margin bottom, MB 15. Let's add a bit of padding. Let's say I want 10 pixels padding, P 10. 
you get the idea. So we don't even really need to worry about the science of this or read any documentation. There's really nothing to learn. It's very instinctual and intuitive. You just type what you want to do in abbreviations. Imagine that you're texting someone on your phone, CSS properties. That's basically what we're doing here. Now you might be wondering about CSS shorthand. So for example, on padding, what if we didn't want the same value for all four directions of padding? What if we wanted one value for vertical padding and one value for horizontal padding? Well, that's where we can use dashes. So let's say padding and we want 10 pixels vertically, but we want 20 pixels horizontal padding. Dash, 20, tab, there you go. And you could do that for the full clockwise four value shorthand as well. Your next question might be, what if I don't wanna use pixels? What if I wanna use percentages? Let's say we wanna give this a width of 85%. So W for width, 85, and then P for percent. Hit tab, we are in business. You can also use E for EM. You can also use R for REM. You get the idea. Now all of this adds up to a much faster workflow when you're writing CSS. So let's say really rapidly I wanna add float left and text align center. FL for float left, tab my way to the next line. TC for text align center, tab. Now I'm not using officially designated abbreviations, I'm just making this up as I go. So sometimes you will come up with an abbreviation that doesn't work, but I would say 99 times out of 100, your gut instinct just come up with an abbreviation and it works. It's that simple. Now before we close out this section on CSS with Emmet, I wanna show you one last feature. You can use the arrow keys on your keyboard to increment numerical values. So let's say on this 85%, I actually want it to be 87%. I can just put my cursor anywhere on the number, hold down the control key on my keyboard and use the up and down arrows on my keyboard to change the value. If I'd rather increment by a decimal instead of one, I hold down alt instead of control and use the up and down arrow keys. And if I wanna increment by 10, I just hold down command and alt at the same time and then use my arrow keys. For PC, it's alt and shift plus your arrow keys. And that's going to bring this lesson on Emmet to a close. I hope you feel like you learned something. I encourage you to go experiment right now with Emmet. And I do wanna point out that we have only scratched the surface of what's possible in Emmet. So if you're hungry to learn even more, Google for the official Emmet documentation. There's a lot to sink your teeth into. It's a great tool. Now changing gears, in our next lesson, we will learn how to create our own snippet. That should be a lot of fun. I will see you then. The lesson you just watched is a part of my web development workflow course. The course covers Sublime Text, SAS architecture and organization, Git, Grunt, Bower, and more. And we use all of this to build a modern website together. The lessons that are about a single tool will be available for free on YouTube. And the lessons where we really sink our teeth into something or see how two or three tools are coming together or maybe write a bit of custom CSS or JavaScript together will be part of the premium course. If you wanna be notified when the premium course is released, you can sign up via the description for this video. Or if you're watching this video in the future, the course has been released and you can find a heavily discounted coupon code in the description for this video. Thanks for watching, bye.